it wasn't just me who lost all these elections. 76, we elected Jimmy Carter, which turned into sort of a nightmare within two years. Then we lose in 80, we lose in 84, we By lose the way, in 88. You, 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 that is all true. Factually true. You don't lose in 80. You lose big. And we then in 84, you get ki yeah. killed, killed in 84. We didn't lose as badly in 88, but right. we still lost. Democrats would have, were ready to do what was necessary to win. And Bill Clinton was a southerner. But wasn't it? Yeah, he was, was a southerner. was much more moderate. I mean, he was pro-death penalty, remember, remember I'll never the forget this, con con the, 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 the white boys caucus, we used to call it, the Democratic Leadership Caucus, he interrupted his campaign in New Hampshire to preside over the execution of a convict who, when fed his last supper, decided to save the dessert for later. Mm. And when I said to him, how could you go back? The guy was obviously mentally severely impaired. How could you go back for that execution? He looked at me and said, how could you ask me that after you know Willie Horton as well as you do? Mm. So, so Clinton was no Dukakis. He was not a liberal. He was not somebody who was had Was he a, a moderate or a pragmatist? Mm -hmm. Or both? Both. Okay. Okay. He would have been more liberal if it was pragmatic to be mm -hmm. so. I think he essentially came from a different Democratic Party and recognized that he needed to socially. He, you know, he went to Yale Law School and he hung out with all my friends and he worked well, for Bob McGovern. Bob used to say he talk talk right, govern left. Talk right, govern left. No, but the truth was he governed right and talked left. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was as comfortable with the left of the Democratic Party as anybody, but he wasn't of the left. And so he was the perfect candidate for 92, except for his Gary Hart problem. So Bill Clinton becomes president. Your friend, the My guy friend. you drove in the car, right. Bill Clinton, oh, it was fun. is the president it of the United weird, States. It was weird, wasn't it? It's, it was weird to have somebody who was a friend of yours be president of the United States. You know? No, that's not weird. That's really weird. No, what's really, that's weird, really weird. What's really weird is when they get in trouble. Okay. And it's your sweet spot. Mm -hmm. I told you my sweet spot was sexual assault against women, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. when I did a lot of work in rape, but I also did a lot of work in sexual harassment, so I get this phone call. Actually, I knew it was coming. But when I got the phone call from Matt Drudge saying... Matt Drudge of the Drudge Report. Bad news about your boy, he says to me. I said, bad news about my boy? He said, an intern. I said, an intern? Like a hospital intern? He said, no, <laughs> oh my God. White House intern. He said, that would be bad news. That would be really, really bad news. And um, the bad news came the next day. I mean, at least I guess I got 24 hours or 18 hours over everybody else. Mm -hmm. And as I think you know, um, I talked to the president right very soon after, and um, all these people kept saying to me, oh, he denied it to me, he swore it wasn't true. I was just like, I don't think so, you know, I just asked him, it wasn't that hard. Um, but that was one case where, you know, Dick Morris was pulling it the whole time through, and we both know, I don't know that others realize, had the president owned up to it at the beginning, he would have been chopped liver. I always tell my candidates that the general rule is never lie. But like every general rule, there are occasional there are exceptions, exceptions to the, to the general, general rule, which is why it's called a general, general rule. And the general it's rule in politics, rule. right, not <laughs> universal, is you never lie. But there you had a situation where had he admitted to having some kind of sexual relationship with Monica Lewinsky in the first heat of the moment, mm -hmm. the cauldron would have exploded. But, but you were not only friends with Bill Clinton, the President of the United States, you were friends with Hillary Clinton. You right, but I was close to, you know, 
to this, I wrote a book called The Case for Hillary Clinton. I know. So I, I feel very strongly, but the person I was really closer to, the mm -hmm. one I know the best, that knew the best, was him. Mm -hmm. He was the one who got me through the Dukakis campaign, really, yes. almost, you know, on a daily basis. And she, was there a moment when you thought that this impeachment really might, that he'd have to resign? Oh, there were many moments when I wondered if it was going to hold together. Um, I mean, it was a really stupid thing. Did his tenacity surprise you? No. I knew he'd be tenacious as hell. Look, we'd been through it with uh, Jennifer Flowers, which I knew was true, too. I mean, you know, that was clearly just, you know, yeah. hold on for dear life. No, he had the tenaciousness that it just takes. I mean... Grit. The grit. Something. I mean, most normal human beings couldn't do that. No. I couldn't tough that out. Mm. I couldn't tough it out the way he did. I just couldn't. I'm not that tough. Well, Newt Gingrich I'd said he's tough in a clinch. I'd have a stomachache forever. Yeah. But he was very tough. The Republicans predictably overreacted. But you know, the funny part is, Somebody was talking about Watergate the other day and reminding me that during the two-year period of the drip drop of Watergate, Nixon opened up China, created the EPA. Mm -hmm. The ability of these guys, and there aren't that many of them. To compartmentalize. The exact word I was going to say. To, to put such major events in a compartment and move forward with other but aspects Susan, of question, the agenda is a, amazing a to me. A question later ensues, and that is that had Bill Clinton not been so distracted by the impeachment for a couple of years, no. right? What are the chances, oh. unknowable, that he would have, first of all, sent Bin Laden for a meeting with his maker, you know, right? There's so many bin things. Bin Laden might so well. many things, and he knew Bin Laden was a threat. He knew he knew that hate was a huge problem that the, that the world would face. He knew that you know, ethnic and religious extremism. We sat in his little study on the third floor once, talking about it and talking about the future, and it was all about that. He knew. I mean, there's a story that went around that he told Bush when he had their ceremonial breakfast to put bin Laden at the top of the list. Yeah, I, I think his second term was tragic in that regard. Yeah. Because we as a country became distracted. And, you know, my students laugh when I say, imagine a time when life was uncomplicated enough that we could all sit around talking about the president's blowjobs. <laughs> and they all laugh. <laughs> because, you know, compared to terrorism and Al-Qaeda and ISIS and beheadings on television, mm -hmm. sitting around endlessly discussing the president's blowjobs seems like, you know, quaint. the 50s, yeah. quaint. Yeah.